I'll start off by congratulating uh, Mississippi State on a great, a great regular season and a, and a great postseason uh, run. Um, to just imagine that that team has got as many quad one wins as they already have. Um, they've beaten the best teams in our conference. They've beaten Kentucky. No, actually, they didn't lose. It was close to Kentucky. Lost. They beat Tennessee twice. They beat us. They've beaten Florida. Um, Chris Jans is a great professional. He, his teams play so hard, so physically, so tough, and, and he's a good dude. Um, and he, he, I know he looked down there a couple times, and he knew we were just doing what we had to do. We have great respect for one another because both of our teams play hard, and I like his team, and I like the way he coaches. Um, you know, it was a rock fight uh, because both teams are playing you know, really, really physical. That's Mississippi State's M.O. Um, our M.O. is playing hard all the time, not always quite as physical, and I thought the fact that we were not able, we did not, you know, they won, they, they, they beat us on the boards, um, but we hung in there. You know, we, we hung in there. I thought that was really important. Um, our balance and, um, and, and re really, really paid off. Um, and, uh, you know, I thought, I thought, I thought Jalen did a tremendous job uh, on Matthews in this game because he's a, a, a real factor. Um, and uh, I thought our five men to only give Tolu three baskets, uh, really, really significant that we were able to, you know, kind of defend Mississippi State on the inside was, was a big factor. All right, raise your hand for uh, questions for either of the student athletes. Let's go ahead and start on the far right. Uh, Justin Lee with the Black Auburn News. Jalen, second half rebounding was just a lot better. What what changed? Did y'all talk about it at halftime or make an adjustment? How'd that happen? Man, we knew they was dominating us on the offensive glass. So I was like, man, let me just jump up, use my athleticism, and just go grab the rebound. So that was really the key. You know, at halftime, we talked about that. I mean, they had more offensive rebounds than we had rebounds total. So. We had to, um, you know, put our pants on, go out there and show them Auburn basketball. Let's go to the far, the last row on the left side. This question is, oh, Jack Patterson from WRBL in Columbus. This question is for Jalen and Chad. Mississippi State came out and kind of, you know, threw the first punch early on. What did it take for you guys to adjust to their style of play and be able to get back in the game? Jalen? Um, I knew, like, you know, they don't play – they played before us, so they don't play a couple more games before us. So, um, I knew coming out they were going to try to be more physical than us. You know, first half they had to stick around as long as they could and um, compete at the highest level as possible because they knew they were tired. They knew they probably didn't have as much rest because they had to prepare for us that whole night and th this morning and we had to play at 12. So, we knew they was going to come out the gate, be physical and be Mississippi State, which is one of the most physical teams in our league. So. You know, we had to adjust and like respect them, but we had to play our game at the end of the day. So, and same for Chad. Is that the same question for Chad? Uh, so basically, you know, we knew that, that it was going to be a dog fight. Uh, we played them twice, so we already seen what they're capable of. So we just had to come out there and basically execute. Coach told us what it was going to be about. Uh, you know, an SEC tournament, many foul calls. So we know, you know, it's going to be really a, a war down there. So we basically came out and listened to Coach take to his game plan and just executed. OK, let's go to the center aisle, row two. Guys, you had a nine-point lead. They cut it to one. Coach calls timeout. And then Dylan Cardwell uh, gets a dunk off a great feed from you, then blocks the three, then gets another dunk. And it just changed the whole momentum. Can you both talk about that minute of the game? Chad, did you go first? Uh, to be honest, I was really a game changer that I feel like gave us a spark to everybody. Even it, ha it helped us, like, you know, get the crowd involved too. So it was a really big place. You know, he came in and basically came in clutch and built, turned the whole momentum around because at that point, you know, how you said they came from a nine point lead. So I feel like that really helped us a lot. Okay, Matt, do you have a question? Okay, left side right there. Jalen and Chad, this is your first win by single digits all season. What do you what do you think you can kind of learn from that making plays down the stretch in a in a tight one? Jalen, uh, make free throws and rebound really because you know um, that's especially when it's that close and we're that up like that. They're gonna foul us and then we gotta get stops and communicate and stick together. Like we can't shut down as a team. Like it's us versus everybody else. So that's what we we did. Same for Chad. Uh, 
When it comes to games like that, basically it comes to who wants it more, you know, the little 50-50 plays, who's going to make the extra hustle, the, the one more pass, and who's more disciplined at the end. So I feel like we, we how he said, we stick together and we knew, you know, we're going to have to take it out from there. We ain't going to just walk in there, you know, and just get a dub. So I feel like we just stayed together at the end and just stayed composed and came out with the dub. Okay, question on the center aisle in the back. Elijah Campbell from 107.5, the game in Columbia. Um, this is for, for Jalen. I mean, you guys had 15 assists on 25 made baskets. What's kind of the secret to being able to distribute the ball as well as you guys did against a team that does play passing lanes really well and is that aggressive and forcing turnovers? Yeah, man, I had a couple bad turnovers because I, I didn't realize how long they were on the perimeter from the get-go. But, um, you know, everybody on our team can score the basketball, so we all trust each other in any position, perimeter, inside, especially like Janai and Dylan and Mia inside, and like you got Chad and Aiden shoot the ball well and outside. So it's just it's very hard to pick and choose who to guard. So like move the ball around, someone's going to get the best option so eventually. We have time for one more question. Let's take the front row right here. Uh, Mitch Davis, the Mitch Davis Show, Jalen, Chad. I want to ask you guys about the budding rivalry uh, between Mississippi State and, and Auburn. It seems like a real fun rivalry uh, that's here to stay. I just want to ask you guys about that as players. Chad? I mean, we know that they have really uh, great players, especially in the backcourt. But, you know, we know that our guys are better. So they know, you know, we never underestimate them. And every time they come, they always give us a good game, a good fight. So. We just really come out there and just play harder than them and try to out-execute them, basically. Jalen? You know, Mississippi State, again, they play harder than most teams in our league, so they give us a lot of things to look at on film, like what we need to get better at as a team. So um, playing against those guys, all the five last five years I've been playing against them, like they've been playing really hard and it's been really good games against them. And um, I mean, it's, it's sad that it's over because I learned a lot from playing against those guys because they play really hard. All right, we'll excuse the student athletes. You can return to the locker room. And we'll continue on with questions for Coach Pearl. Let's start right here in the front row center. Um, Michael Giddens, World Poor Auburn, Alabama. Coach, going back to the discussion about matchups, uh, you're getting killed on the offensive boards early. You guys made some adjustments, it seemed like. Uh, maybe you kind of stymied the tide there. What did you tell your team? What did you guys see? Uh, and how did you make adjustments to kind of win that in the second half? Well, originally, you know, what we talked about originally was the bigs are going to have to keep their bodies on their bigs and the guards are going to have to rebound down. And then when you play against Mississippi State, it's just not that. It's, it's got to take multiple efforts. The bigs have got to hit. they got to increase their umbrella. And then they got to go chase down loose balls. Um, because there's not going to be a clean one. It just isn't. And so I thought, I, I just thought early, we we just were slow to, to, you know, we're slow to do both. You know, you're gonna you're gonna get in a ball screen. You, you got to hit Hubbard, and and not let him turn a corner. And then you got to get back to Tolu, and you got to front him. And then you know you got it just takes multiple efforts. And I thought early on we weren't we weren't giving that kind of effort on the on the rebound. Okay, front row on the right. Uh, Bruce, you had depth in the second half. I mean, was that how big it was that for you in this one? Or say again, depth. Just how big was it? To, you could talk going into the tournament. How big depth would be for you guys? Did that come true here in the second half? Yep. We um, we're a program that's committed to playing ten guys double digit minutes. We're a program that's committed to playing our stars sometimes under thirty, and um, and 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 so that we can be fresh in March, and so we can be fresh in the end of the season. We can be fresh at the end of games or the end of halves to be able to make runs. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's like to have guys like Cheney Johnson or Chris Moore or KD Johnson, you know, Trey Donaldson and Dylan Carwell coming off the bench and just having confidence in those guys and not dropping off and being just different. And I mean, how many, how many, how many effort energy plays did Chris Moore make? Um, just, you know, and then Dylan Carwell. Um, yeah, it's hard to have Janai Broom out of the game late. That's hard. But Dylan was such a factor defensively, and I, and I wanted to give Janai a quick blow to kind of end it. And he makes a he, he comes out there and he switches on Hubbard and blocks a shot and gets the dunk and and uh, you know not I just don't think a lot of backup centers are going to be in there in that time. But we believe in it. We believe in the sum of our parts. 
Any question on the left aisle? BP, yeah, same thing. I was going to ask you the, of the players. First single digit win of the year. What do you think you kind of learned? Was it maybe not a bad thing that they had to go through something like that in the in the postseason? What's your? What's it was your really good. I got to tell you, you know, working with uh, I thought I thought um, Chad William Chad Pruitt, uh, Corey Williams did a really good job with the scout, the preparation, um, uh, and then it is a limited it's a limited play call list because most of what we do won't work because of the way they guard. It just it just, I mean, 73 points was hard. <laughs> um, so it was good to be in a close game. Uh, I thought down the stretch, obviously, we didn't turn the ball over late. Um, and we made our free throws. Got the ball, and, you know, got the ball to Jalen Williams, got the ball to Chad Baker, Mazzara, and, they, and, they, and, and Trey, and they, and they did a nice job closing it out. Next question, second row on the aisle. Doug Amos, ESPN Ticket, Montgomery, Auburn. Coach, uh, second chance points, huge. They had 10 in the first half. They had zero till the last few seconds on the dunk. Uh, that had to be big for your team. Yep. Yeah, it was. And I think the guys talked about it, you know, a lot at halftime. And, you know, there's a tendency to succumb to fatigue and the physicality. And it was a tough, tough game to work, you know, from the standpoint of keeping that game under control. Both teams just playing really, really hard, really physically. Okay, far right, second row. Drew Hill, Daily Memphian. How have you seen Chris sort of develop in his years with you, and what does it mean to have a player that's kind of willing to take on different roles and change positionally and maybe where he is in the rotation? Yeah, man, Chris Moore started for us most of the year because he was one of our best teammates. He's just a hardworking, great guy. and It let me bring Chad Baker Bizarre off the bench, gave us some firepower off the bench. Um, but, you know, you're talking Dylan Carwell, a four-year guy with a chance to be back for a fifth year. Jalen Williams, a fifth-year guy, the winningest player in the history of Auburn basketball. Chris Moore, a four-year guy. Um, you just don't see that anymore in college. That's your culture. That's your chemistry. Uh, we got to treat it, continue to find ways to recruit guys that want to be part of a family and want to grow and develop. And as you said, have their roles change. Uh, it, it requires some unselfishness. We can do that at Auburn because our kids love Auburn. They're not just out there. Um, they care about the name on the back of the jersey and the front of the jersey when you go to Auburn. It, it's just true. And so, um, you know, they've got a large voice. They got a loud voice in that locker room. Uh, even some of those guys that are coming off the bench. And so, uh, Chris brings physicality. He brings toughness. He brings respect. And. Um, you know, made a big, made some big shots tonight. Any any let's guy like Chad Baker Mazzara, who is clearly more talented player, not have to play 32 or 33 minutes, and and with withstand four fouls. We have time just for a couple more. Let's go. We got two in the back. Jenna, if y'all go back there and get those two, and then we'll wrap it up. Coach, you mentioned that the, after the Georgia game that the first game in the SEC tournament will be the hardest game that you play and that it gets easier as you go on. You're one game away from the title. Have you already kind of taken a look at Texas A&M and Florida and what's it going to take for you to get that cut down the nest tomorrow? Yeah, I'm laughing because I was, I was obviously wrong. Um, the toughest game wasn't the first game. Uh, but it, that had nothing to do with our opponent. We played really well against South Carolina. Um, we we lost at Florida. We beat Texas A&M at home. We've only played each team one time. Um, I thought that the four teams remaining were the teams that played as hard and physically in this tournament as anybody. And I think those those four teams, Texas A&M and in Florida, I think in this game, same thing in their matchup. I got you know in the matchups leading up to this. So um, they're different. They're both they're both really different. We've got groups of coaches that have had the different scouts. And so uh, I've got two groups of coaches that are going to be on Alabama, excuse me, going to be on Florida and going to be on Texas A&M. I'll work on us for about an hour or two till the game's over. And then I'll shift gears and, and start working on the team. We'll meet with the team tonight at 8 o'clock, give them a, a bit of a preliminary scouting report, let them get in and get off their feet. And then we'll get 8 o'clock tomorrow morning breakfast and another scout. So we'll probably have about two hours between now and the game time with our team. And then it's just about going out there playing. And there's a lot on the line tomorrow. Opportunity for uh, anybody here 
to make really, really sp uh, some kind of special history. So we're, we're, we're still in position okay, to make last, history. Last question on the center in the back. You mentioned scratching and clawing for 73 points today. Had 86 against another really good defense yesterday. So it's two good offensive performances against two really different types of defense. What about your unit? is able to be adaptable against different types of uh, defensive teams? That's a really good question because, like, again, Texas A&M tomorrow, with all their switching and all their changing of defenses, they're hard to play call against. Um, and uh, Florida with all their size and length. And uh, those, what a matchup this is going to be now of great guards. you got four of the best guards in the league in Florida and Texas A&M kind of going at each other. Um, either way, it's going to be a really hard game. but. Tomorrow is going to be another hard game to score, so we'll have to figure some things out. And while we're trying to figure it out, we better get stops. Thank you.